How do you give a voice agent business-specific knowledge inside of VAPI? Are you adding the knowledge base to the model? Or do you add it via a tool call? Or do you directly put it inside of the prompt? With so many options, it's hard to choose which one is the right one. So in this video, I'll show you how you can add company-specific information to a VAPI voice assistant. I will also show you which methods to choose and which methods to avoid. So to get started, I first show you all three methods so you understand what options you have and then we dive into which one is actually the good or the best one to use and which ones you probably want to avoid. So I'm right here inside of my Buppy dashboard and I'm under the system called Riley, which I just set up as a very standard voice AI concierge system for a fake hotel called Sunset Cove Hotel. I literally just generated this with a Wapi AI assistant generator, which does its job for this video. And all it's supposed to do is just answer some basic things about the company. And we also want to give it knowledge about the actual hotel, right? So I have a knowledge base right here, which is just something that I basically prepared with JetGPT, so nothing special, but simply imagine that this would be a knowledge base that you could just have from a client, so from an existing hotel. And what I'm gonna do now in the first one is we basically use it within the prompt. So this would be number one. So in case you have a knowledge base that is not too big, like this one is okay, you could potentially just drop it inside of the prompt as a knowledge base. And the way I would do that is I would basically just go to the end of the prompt and I would just add a new section here with markdown. Let's, let's call it maybe company information. And in the company information, I literally just drop in this whole knowledge base, which now would be available inside of the assistant as just pure knowledge, right? So if you use a model like 4.1, it's most likely going to work because it can understand context and it can understand when there's guidelines and style, what it needs to follow. And that this down here is basically just general information that it should use, you know, in case the customer asks. So while this works, there are a couple of reasons why I don't use it, which is mainly also because you, it's very hard sometimes to control the quality of it if you don't maintain it yourself, but also because it often suggests things that you might not want, right? Especially if it comes to booking and they have a WhatsApp contact, it sometimes happens that it just tries to send the WhatsApp contact URL via phone calls, which doesn't make sense. So one of the reasons why I don't like it that much, but uh, it does its job for smaller knowledge bases, which is great. Now just removed it right here. And the second thing we're gonna look into is the actual knowledge base integration that Vapi has. Right, and oh, it seems like something didn't work with my assistant, there we go. Now, Wapi itself has a knowledge base integration that allows you to basically, without any kind of technical knowledge, set up a vector storage. Basically, you just upload your file and it's there and you can then use it inside of voice assistants. But there are two different ways on how you can do that. Now, both of them are connected to the files right here, which is basically where you have all of your knowledge uploaded. Meaning that now, instead of having it in the system prompt, we're gonna use the file section right here. And as you can see, I already uploaded one, which is literally nothing else than this content saved in a text file that I just uploaded. So to upload it, all you do is you basically click on choose file. You simply drop in the file of the knowledge that you basically have. And I would definitely always recommend to validate those. And with validating, I mean, you just clean the data. So in case you use stuff from the website or from any kind of other PDF, etc., you wanna clean it up that it looks nice and neat and tidy like this one. You have amenities, it's properly structured. You potentially even have it in markdown format because it makes it just easier to retrieve. So that's something I, re I recommend you to do. And once you uploaded it, it will look something like this and you have a file ID right here, which becomes important in a second. But first I'm gonna show you the first method on how you can actually use it. Because from here on, it's they make it very, very easy to use. Sometimes a bit too easy in my opinion, and I'll show you why as well. But let's say you uploaded the file and you wanna connect it to your assistant. So all I do is I head back to my assistant right here and in the side window here, you have the file section and in the file section, you can simply select the file. Now this would automatically connect the file directly to the WAPI assistant and it is accessible right within the assistant whenever you call it. Now, while this method works, it's not the best for various reasons. And one of them being that the call is gonna be more expensive, it's gonna be slower and you also have higher hallucinations. Why? Because whenever you have a file added right within here, what they do on the chat completions, so whenever you basically stop saying something on the call and it's being sent to the LLM, they inject information from the knowledge, so from whatever you have in the files, into the system prompt. So you can imagine that you have a lot more tokens that's being sent to the chat completion, which obviously blows the prompt, it adds more context that might not even be relevant, because the customer might just ask a question about the hotel name, like what's your hotel name? And the hotel name is already defined in the system prompt. So in that case, we would not even need to have data retrieval, right? So whatever it retrieves, it's unnecessary. And that actually makes even a bigger difference to pricing. So having it inside of the file section is a an approach that works, but the use cases for that, to be fair, we haven't seen them. That's why we don't use it at all, at least in our case right now. But it's an option that's there. So this is the second option. And the third option, which also involves the files, 
But in that case, we use what we recommend, which is by the way, also our favorite option, it's using tools. So instead of having the files in the side section right here and basically injecting the information with every single message that is being sent from within the voice AI call to the LLM, we are using a tool, which means that the AI system, so the agentic system itself can decide by itself when to actually retrieve the knowledge instead of relying on the non-stop static bombarding of knowledge inside of the assistant. And the way that works is by using these tools that you can see right up here and right up here. Inside of the voice assistant, you have the connection. So where you basically connect the tools and right here, you can create the tools. And I'm gonna show you how, as well how that works. So all you would do is you basically go over here to the tool section. You probably won't have any. You click on create tool and you select the query tool right here. Now I've already done that. It's called knowledge tool. I've pre-configured it so you can see it and we're just gonna go over this whole setup. I named it knowledge tool so it's easier for the AI to understand what this tool does. And I also have a description here that again, makes it just easier for AI to understand when to use this tool. So we have additional context about the current given hotel used to enrich the answers with relevant information. So you can imagine if your system prompt is structured properly inside of the assistant, it will know to use the knowledge tool in case it doesn't know something, which then basically allows us to retrieve information. Now, until this point, it is only a tool. It doesn't have information. And the information is what you add here in the knowledge base section. So you have this nice button up here where you can add knowledge and you basically just click on it. It adds the knowledge base. I've already done that right here. You can see I just added a name, hotel details FAQ. It's basically just the general information of whatever I have available right here. And then I also have a description that just finds or specifies a little bit more what's inside of this document. And lastly, I have a file ID right here which is the file ID we got from the files. So that's what I mentioned earlier, right? If you go to the file section right here, you have the file ID up, up here. You simply copy that, you head over to the tools, you open your tool, and down here in the file IDs, you just paste it. That's literally all you need to do. Now, you can also adjust the messages down here, which is just another thing that makes it easier for you or more optimized to have certain messages within the phone call. And in that case, it's English. So if it's multilingual, there are a couple of different ways on how you can do it, but that's the thing for another day. By default, you won't have any messages set, but if you click here on messages, you can see you can add a message on completion, on failure. You can set a, re a request response delayed. So in case it takes longer, you can have another follow-up message. Or what I have added right here is request start. And I just added that to showcase to you how that actually works. Because let's, for example, say the voice assistant or you, someone is calling with the assistant and they ask about the pet policy of the hotel. In that case, the voice AI would say, please hold on because it now initiates a tool call and the tool call is to retrieve knowledge information from the knowledge base. So basically from the file that you've added, return it and then say whatever it retrieved to the user inside of that call. So this please hold on is basically being said before the tool is called or while the tool is called. So you can define that here as well. And you can also say right here, as you can see, to basically wait until the message has been spoken to start the tool call, which I don't recommend. So I would just leave that off. Now, once you have that knowledge tool ready, you simply click on save up here and you head back over to your assistant. So we simply head to Riley. So you can see I removed everything. I removed the files right here. So there are no files connected. I head over to the tool section and in the tool section here, I simply select the knowledge tool, which is the one that I created specifically for the use case. Now, if I click publish, it now means that the assistant, so basically the model has access to this tool that we have right here which by the way, works really well with OpenAI and with 4.1, it's also pretty good for reasoning. So you can have the setup very, very easily in place and now ask it questions. And you can see right here, there's basically nothing defined about knowledge, but it can be used for knowledge pretty well. And I cannot show you how it works by actually calling the AI. All right, to call it, what we're gonna do is we click up here on to talk to assistant and we're gonna ask it some questions. So let's just see what question would make sense. Yeah, we have the pet policy. That would be one we could try smoking. $200 cleaning fee violation. Let's just try the pet policy because uh, it has like a $50 cleaning fee. Let's see if it can actually recognize that because it's not added in here. So let's just give this a call. Hey, how can I help you? Hey, can you tell me more about your pet policies? Please hold on. Certainly, we welcome pets under 20 pounds in designated rooms. Um, there's a $50 cleaning fee for pets. Awesome, thank you. As you can see, it said, please hold on, because that was defined inside of the tools, inside of the knowledge tool right here. Please hold on, it's a static message we just asked it to send. And it also told us the exact pricing that it didn't have available inside of the assistant files, but literally just via the tool. 
And that is a lot better because now you can have the conversation without the nonstop injecting of information from within the file section, which just increases quality, it reduces your costs, and it also makes the assistant a lot better. So basically causing less hallucinations. Now there is another method that I haven't mentioned yet because it's a little bit more complex to set up, but I just want to guide you a little bit towards how you can make it work. So you have heard it at least. And the way it works is also by using tools, but now instead of using the knowledge tool, we could use, for example, a function. And the function basically then allows us to fetch information from an external service, so we can basically define a URL. I show you that as well. Inside the function tool, we can basically define the name, obviously, and right here we can define the server URL, which means that whenever this function or this tool is called inside of the voice assistant, it makes a request to this URL and tries to retrieve something. Now, this is what we usually would have called a normal tool call, but this allows us to send stuff to an external service like make.com and in make.com we can connect it to a vector database like Quadrant and basically just run through a whole custom setup of whatever we want to or however we want to structure this whole knowledge base to retrieve information. We've done that with custom knowledge bases, so custom vector data storages. We've also just done that by actual separate completions that we've outsourced into a tool call. So simply imagine that when this tool was called, we ask a separate chat completion that is built inside of Make to retrieve information from a file that we added directly inside of a chat completion module of OpenAI to retrieve the information and send it back. So that is another option that you can look into, which is a little bit more complicated. And if you want, I make a tutorial about that as well, if it's relevant. But apart from that, this is the options that you have available. And now given all of those options, which one do you think is the best? I mean, I already shared a lot of information, so I'm just gonna guide you which ones is actually the one that we like the most which kind of like, you can probably guess it, it is already the Curie one with the tools right here. This is more than enough if you want to have sim simple assistance without any kind of external validation. Now, while this works well, and it does great for a lot of use cases, it doesn't work for all of them that well, and that comes down to metadata, right? So we, for example, build a lot of real estate agents where we actually fetch property information from a custom vector storage and we want to make sure we also filter things by prices etc so we don't want to return everything but just literally specific values that have been filtered or pre-filtered now the knowledge tool is great for just retrieving text to getting standard information but it is not as good of filtering things on a more granular scale right and for those cases it still makes sense to use functions but generally for simplicity and the ease of use and getting the best out of it even for beginners the knowledge tool is the best thing you can use because it's very easy, it's efficient, and it does what it's supposed to. Now, given that, the worst thing you can potentially do is not even adding the prompt inside of here, but it's adding the prompt inside of the file section right here. So literally just uploading the files here and adding it directly into the voice assistant. This is what we've seen the worst approach because it makes things more expensive, it makes hallucinations, and one thing that I haven't mentioned, it also lengthens the call duration, which just sounds weird. But simply imagine that because you push in more tokens, you first have a little bit higher transfer in between of the chat completions. And you also have a bit more latency because there are more tokens that need to be calculated in some of the cases. So overall, the file section right here is the worst one. We don't recommend using that at all. It's even better just dropping the whole knowledge base inside of the system prompt in, if that is necessary in your case. But like I say, the tools is probably the best option that you can take for making sure your assistant does well, answers properly and hallucinates less. That's all I have for you today. If you want to learn more about voice AI, you definitely want to check out our community where we work on the future of voice AI together. I'll link it below in the description if you want to check it out. And it's totally free, of course. That's all I got for you today. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.